This is Emerson Bigglewings coming to you from Jakarta, Indonesia, and I am about to show you my latest, greatest project. This is a mob farm slash item farm based on the Mobstar design by Monkey Puzz. I'm really proud of this. It took me a very long time, so if you like it, please let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscription. You never know. I might make more videos in the near future. I kind of like this. But yeah, let's get to it. I'll show you what I have created. Dun, 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 dun. Well, this is my seed. I leave the seed in the description. It's the same seed that has the triple dungeon right next to the spawn, so it's a great way to start off and get some easy EXP and all sorts of enchantments. The dungeon was over there. Um, yeah, you can see it's a jungle right next to some extreme hills, right next to some plains, right next to some snow. It's really pretty, I think. And the first step for this spherical mob trap is to dig a big hole in the ground. This circle here is 55 blocks in diameter. If you go to plots.uk, P-L-O-T-Z, uh, you can get instructions on how to dig slash build a sphere, and that's what I did here. 55 blocks because divide that by 2, you get 24. Well, aside from the middle block. Yeah, 20, oh, 26, sorry, yeah, 26. 27, 54 plus 1, yeah, 27 blocks. So the mobs will spawn 27 blocks away from me in all directions. I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing you want to do is make your sphere deeper. This takes a lot of digging. This is about a day's worth of digging for me right here. And that's with some enchanted pickaxes and shovels and stuff like that. My fingers are really starting to hurt at this point, but I got a good start to it. It's going to be 27 blocks deep, as it is 27 blocks in radius. And yeah, I got a little bit more digging to do, I think. <sighs> so let's get to it. Sheep. I like sheep. Okay, um, I'm starting to regret this idea. This is another evening's digging. Gets me down about five more layers. It's starting to look rather spherical, but my finger is about to fall off, and I am starting to regret this idea a little bit. Maybe I could have just built it over the water like a normal person would, but no. Oy. Oh well, back to digging. Oh. This is really starting to tick me off. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am getting down there and I really, really, really... Oh. This is really 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 starting to get on my nerves it's a lot of digging and i'm starting to think that i don't have the patience for this uh, one of these days i'm going to miss the water and just end it all okay i'm almost done there i just attach a pickaxe to that sheep it would make things a lot easier this is the final layer of my sphere Yes, I have dug a big, huge 57 diameter half sphere into the ground, and I should feel good because I got this part done, but I have so much more work ahead of me, and this took me so long that, uh, yeah, I might take a little break after this and just, uh, you know, take up tennis or something. I have so much cobblestone, I could build a replica of the Mount Rushmore or something with it, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe I will just go play a different game. Maybe I'll play Mario Tennis or something for a while. Yes, that sounds good. Hmm. Fact Xanadu on the original NES. A return to the basics. Something that doesn't tax my finger bones as much as this. That was the last block. And I'm very happy. But I'm also very perturbed because I have so much more to do. But it's gonna look really cool when it's done, I hope. 
So yeah. <sighs> there is really no easy way to get out of a sphere. Just so you guys know. It involves a lot of running around and jumping and placing dirt and digging the dirt and jumping some more. I could have made something to help me get out easier, but no. Kind of a masochist that way. Well, let's go take a look at it, shall we? The finished product. It only took me 5 minutes and 33 seconds of digging. Or video time, anyway. More like 5 weeks and 33 hours. But yeah, that's about a 1 to 100 ratio. <sighs> This is going to be really cool when it's done. It's going to be well worth it, and I can't wait. Whee! It is a really pretty seed, though, I think. Sometimes I love this game. Sometimes I hate this game. There she is. My half-sphere. All finished. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I think I'm going to go back up the save file now, just to be on the safe side. Well, now that we got the half sphere dug, the fun part can begin. So let's get into this. We have to build a top half of this sphere, and for it, for the idea I have in mind, I am going to need a lot of black. So, here, sheep. Here, sheepy, 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 sheep. Hmm. Ah, oh, that suits my mood. Nice little rain. Okay, guys. I got really pissed off with this whole thing and just decided to fill it all in with dirt and make me a coliseum of some kind. Yeah, I didn't really want a big half-sphere, full-sphere mob trap item farm or whatever. So, yep, I just filled it in. Okay, but I did get some sheep. Hello, sheep. You look like ants from up here. Well, let's go take a look at my new project, shall we? Hmm. Yep, nice little grass floor. I'm just kidding. You think I'd actually fill that in with dirt? Not likely. Yeah, so this is the... Well, this is pretty much all one big spawn pad there. It's a lot of one, one by one, one by two, one by eight. So not many spiders will spawn in this trap, but who needs string anyway? I think I'll get more string than I ever need. But I filled this in with dirt just because um, I'm going to be falling to my death a lot, I have a feeling, building this top sphere. So that will kind of cushion the blow a little bit. So yeah, this is starting to take shape. Okay, guys. Here comes my top spear harvesting portion of the video. I'm going to be using black wool for the top half of the spear. So, yeah, I am going to need a lot of black wool from a lot of sheep. Come to me, my sheepies. Come to me. Come to me. Okay, I have some wool. Sheep really freak me out in this game sometimes, but it's a good freaky, you know. Anyway, I got my wool. It's time to go back and build some stuff. Whee! <clears throat> okay, guys, good morning to you all. I have completely finished my upper dome. And I put the flushing system in as well. Well, the beginning part of it anyway. 
The great thing about this spherical mob trap is that the entire thing can be flushed with one dispenser. Yes, Monkey Puzzle's original design had a ring of dispensers around the whole middle of the sphere, which was a lot of dispensers. This design doubles the spawning area of that design, and the whole thing can be flushed with just one bucket of water and one dispenser. Yeah, that's what I really, really like about this. <clears throat> In order for things to spawn on the top half of the sphere, well, you have to leave a little gap between the top and the bottom half. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. And we're going to need some kind of cover on this thing so we can use it during the day. But yeah, let's go take a look inside. It's really cool. This is the inside of my mob trap. So far, the beginning, it's going, there's a lot of work left to be done, but as you can see, the water comes off of the top half of the sphere and completely flushes the bottom half of the sphere, sending everything to a center point right in the middle. I'm going to build some elaborate system down there eventually, but right now I just want a collection point. So yeah, we got a lot of work to do yet, folks, but it's starting to take shape, and I am really, really, really excited about it. Sorry if it's a little bit dark, but hey, well, that's mob farms for you. But it's pretty, isn't it? I'll explain the torches at the end. <laughs> sheep. I love you, sheep. Ah, maybe I don't. Ah. Okay. But anyway, yeah, we got some work to do, ladies and gentlemen, so. I hope you've enjoyed the construction of it so far. And now for the finished product. Don't ask for a tutorial. This is your tutorial. Here we go. It is I, Emerson Bigglewings, and my pet sheep. One of them. He's proud of me. He's like, this is the coolest thing I have ever seen. But I'd like to uh, thank everybody who made this possible. Uh, Monkey Puzz, um, the guy who designed the oh, little piston clock at the top, which I replaced the glass with redstone blocks. Um, I didn't see anybody do that on YouTube. I just came up with that by myself, but somebody else probably did it first. But I have not, never seen anybody do a spherical mob trap like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the planetarium. Those of you with keen eyes will notice all my torches have lost their sticks. And I will show you why. But first of all, let's go take a look at this beast. I still have a lot of lighting up to do. I still got a ton of caving. I picked a bad area. There's a lot of trenches. And yeah, so it's not quite up to efficiency yet, but it works. The actual mob farm item farm works as good as it's going to as far as flushing and the dynamics of it goes so let's take a look around my god it's full of stars that's why i removed all the sticks i wanted a planetarium type feel i wanted a place where you can just go and chill out and look at the stars while mobs fall to their death around you that's my collection point down there everything gets flushed into it they come off the top sphere, which is shaded from the sun, so it works during the day and the night. And they fall around the edges, through the bottom part of the sphere, and down to their death. So let's turn this thing on, shall we? This um, allows the piston clock up top to work, and this button starts the pulse. So in about 45 seconds or less, water will start to come down off the sides, bringing with it mobs, hopefully. Like I said, I have a ton of lighting to do, but I think when um, I get all the caving and lighting up done, it's going to generate, oh, I'm guessing, well, Monkey Puzzles did around a good 4,000, I think, per hour. I'm, I'm guessing around 6,000 items per hour with this thing, which is more than I ever need, really. And I think it's one of the coolest darn looking mob farms I've seen anywhere on YouTube. I love the spherical design. And uh, yeah, Monkey Plus, thank you for um, doing this proof of concept for me, and I hope you like what I've done with it. So any second now, hopefully, the water will start coming and bringing with it some mobs from the top shelf. There's a few mobs floating around the bottom shelf, the bottom sphere. 
But yeah, I'm not too worried. Once I get all my lighting done, this thing is going to rock. So what if you had a mob farm and nobody showed up? No, just kidding. The, um, the water animation on my laptop is not the greatest. Big chunks of water spawn, like other chunks don't spawn, but the actual dynamics are there. So you'll just see mobs that look like they're floating. Here comes the water. You see mobs that look like they're floating on water that... Um, there's no water there, but they're kind of bobbing up and down like they are in water. Like that creeper over there, and that zombie over there. So yeah, it works. Uh, a lot of the mobs get hung up on that top shelf, and they might drown up there, but the water will push their items down to the hole in the ground anyway. And uh, usually when the end of the water pulse comes, it's usually 45 seconds on and about 15 seconds off. When, no, other way around, 45 seconds off, 15 seconds on. When the end of the water pulse comes, the, uh, the mobs kind of ride the top of it down towards that hole in the middle there. Where they all fall to their death. I was getting a really good, really good flow of them earlier. Right now it's just a drop trap. They fall 23 blocks below the bottom of the sphere, which takes them about to... Oh, 15 above bedrock, which is where my collection point is. But yeah, let's go take a look at that collection point here pretty quick, hopefully. Hello, Enderman. Don't look at him. Yeah, this thing doesn't do Enderman. I'm um, going to have to make some wall of water around the outside. And I already got enough water here. I'm happy with it. It really is a cool design, I think. Well, before we look at the collection point, let's take you upstairs. I'll show you the piston clock. Here you can see the top half of the sphere, and if you look in the distance right there, you can see the single dispenser pointing straight down, ow, which uh, flushes this whole trap. That's the thing I liked about this most, I think, because I could do the whole thing with one little dispenser. This is the uh, on-off switch. It sends a pulse over to this piston, which pushes a little block to break the current in the piston clock. And this is the piston clock. Um, since the update, the old glass one doesn't work anymore because every break between the, uh, the wool I'm using here sends a signal. So it'd go on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. But I fixed that using this redstone system. That right next to the glass, you see that redstone. Uh, whenever the redstone block hovers over it, it sends a pulse to the dispenser, and the dispenser drops its, drops its load, or its, <laughs> its water all over the, the big sphere, so yeah. And the second redstone block turns it off. One for on, one for off. And yeah, it's a really efficient system. Um, you can play with this as much as you want to make uh, the, the water as you know frequent as you want, but I think uh, the one I got here is uh, pretty cool. Anyway, let's go take a look at the collection area. Sure, you can have that grass. I didn't want it. Well, okay. I promise I'll show you the collection area in a second. I'm just so proud of the inside. But yeah, as you can see, it works pretty well. The pulse just got turned off, and they're all falling to their doom. The ones that get hung up on the side, they all eventually end up down in the middle. Either their items do or they do, so yeah, it's pretty efficient. I don't have any, uh, any glitchiness or problems with it, really. Ow. Where's my items? Oh, I turned off my... Mm. I turned off my gooey. Why did I turn off my gooey? Ow. Freaking spiders. Okay, collection area, as I promised. I'm going to make this a lot prettier, and I want to put in an item sorter here eventually, so once I get everything lit up and uh, everything, you know, perfect, I'll make another video. But I just wanted to get this out here so you can see what I've been working on for the past two months. Yeah, it really was a labor of love, but I'm really happy now that it's done. This is my item room. 
everything falls right under these hoppers and it gets pushed into these chests. Now, this is very, very temporary. I want to make some big item sorter. But the good thing about this mob trap is I can just <laughs> take all my stuff and throw it into the, uh, the water and it all ends up down in my chests. But yeah, I'm getting a good deal of gunpowder just from uh, the preliminary testing stages here, so I'm happy. I'm also getting a lot of ink sacks too, so this is also an ink sack farm, which is kind of nice. Because you can never have enough ink sacks, kids. Okay, well that was it. Yeah, I'm going to uh, do a lot of improvements, get all the lighting done, and uh, make another video once it's all finished and pretty. But hey, thanks for watching this. This uh, took me a long time. I hope you like it. If you can improve upon it, feel free. If you liked it, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, give me a big thank you or way to go in the description. And, uh, hey, yeah, thanks for watching. This is Bigel Wings from Jakarta, Indonesia, and this is my mob farm. The Planetarium. My God. It's full of stars.